Crypto is growing at twice the speed of the internet in terms of adoption. So it's the fastest adoption of any technology and any asset class the world has ever seen. So if we just assume that growth slows as it did with the internet, because once you get bigger and bigger numbers, it's hard to grow at such a rate. So it goes from, let's say, 175% a year where it's been trending and goes to 43% a year, which is what the internet did from year eight onwards. Well, crypto gets to a billion people by the end of next year, a billion active wallets, and it gets to 4 billion by 2030. Well, at 4 billion, the price will certainly be a million dollars. Following recent turbulent highs, the cryptocurrency market is currently experiencing a period of relative silent. Real Vision founder and well-known macro analyst Raul Pal provides guidance among the uncertainties, given that the majority of digital assets have experienced double-digit drops from their most recent high. It is unclear what causes this correction. According to reports, the spot Bitcoin ETFs, which were formerly catalysts for price increases and demand, have had negative to flat flow recently, which has contributed to the current decline. But even in the middle of the downturns, excitement is growing for the 2024 Bitcoin halving, which is scheduled today at roughly midnight Eastern Standard Time. Industry insiders are anticipating this event with great anticipation, as it might revive the bullish trajectory of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, possibly pushing prices to new all-time highs. Against this backdrop of the market, Raul is a shining light of knowledge and analysis. Pal's perspective, which predicts that Bitcoin might reach as high as $400,000 per coin before the cycle ends. A startling 543% gain from present levels is highly sought for by fans and investors alike. He discusses his predictions for the 2024 crypto bull market and provides his thoughts on what might be in store for digital assets in the upcoming months in a recent interview with Altcoin Daily. Come along as we examine PAL's predictions and speculate on Bitcoins and the cryptocurrency market's possible futures. So the halving itself is a non-event um it's really it's the signal that you're about to come into crypto summer which happens to coincide with the presidential election years every time and it also corresponds with what i call the everything code cycle which is the debt refinancing cycle which is the macro cycle they're all the same thing so you get this kind of powerful dynamic of politicians giving out free candy because they're going into an election stimulus you tend to have a liquidity cycle because of the business cycle because they have to refinance the debts of the governments. And you tend to have the Bitcoin halving, which is a reduction in supply. And that's why these periods get really quite exciting. It's difficult to know what kind of cycle we're going to be dealing with. There's a school of thought that says it's a left translated cycle, which means it goes up fast early and then peaks early. Most would finish in 2025 in December. That's normally how these crypto cycles have finished. That that third year would be the a December, November kind of period. So could it come earlier and peter out this year? There's definitely a probability of that. What price would that be? I would say 200,000, something like that. And that would be, okay, that's gone very far, very fast. The most likely outcome is a standard bull market. Now, the last one we had, 2020, 2021, was actually a stunted cycle because really the final leg never happened. We had a huge final leg in 2017 and an even more enormous one in 2013. But last time around, we didn't get one, which caught everybody off surprise, including myself. So somewhere that would be, you know, Bitcoin gets to, let's say, 200 to 250,000 um, peaks somewhere between the summer and the end of the year. OK, that seems pretty reasonable. The other probability is that we have a full bubble cycle because now there's more access to it by the ETFs. There's more acceptance. There's more regulatory acceptance. Um, it captures more mind share. There's like 110 million Coinbase wallets and only about 10 million are active right now. So that number can go up dramatically. So we can see a huge participation um, and a final kind of belief that this is, this is it. That could happen. And in which case, then you could see an extension to maybe 400,000 plus in this cycle. But I would give the short cycle and the bubble cycle roughly the same probabilities. I'm probably more earning to earning towards the bubble cycle, but let's call them both 20% probability and 60% for something normal. So if Bitcoin is the gateway drug, the RAAs, everybody else, you can kind of get your dad across the line with Bitcoin. Um, you know, and you can just use digital gold or you know store of value or something that's pretty straightforward. ETH really is the settlement layer for 
all of the layer twos, but also I think a lot of the financial services industry will build on top of it because it's deemed to be the safe bet. It's like using Salesforce for your CRM and other stuff. It's like using AWS, right? It's the thing you don't get fired for. Now, I think Solana will grab part of that market because of FireDancer, which is much faster. We can talk about that later. But generally speaking, ETH is the easy choice. It's like you work for a large corporation, they'll give you Microsoft Office. ETH is Microsoft Office. During their talk, Pal emphasizes the excitement around the current bull market and stresses that there are important changes to look forward to before its predicted end in 2025. The former CEO at Goldman Sachs said that the start of cryptocurrency season is one very fascinating feature. Pal believes that after a leading cryptocurrency hits a new all-time high, there will be a very positive phase for alternative cryptocurrencies. Based on previous cycles, he believes that while the bull market continues, popular altcoins like Dogecoin, Solana, and Ethereum would outperform Bitcoin. Pal also looks forward to the possible reversal of the tightening policies of central banks and the revival of quantitative easing, QE. He claims that 2024 is a summer for both cryptocurrencies and macroeconomics, signifying more market liquidity. Pal goes into further detail in his interview with Altcoin Daily on his expectations for cryptocurrency assets in a bull market, emphasizing what he believes to be the next big story. He also provides insightful investing guidance specifically for Bitcoin investors looking to take advantage of this big opportunity. Let's hear what he has to say. Yeah. The biggest game in town, however, is what is the Solana of this cycle? If you remember, Solana last cycle was huge. So was Avalanche, so was Polygon. There was a few of them that really got the narrative and it really Solana won out that as the next big thing. The others are still fine. They've got activity and stuff going on, but not the scale of Solana. The question is, is what is that one of this cycle? Because you can make some real money in that bet. But this is where people start going too far out the risk curve. You really need to see what is getting some real adoption and a real narrative and real developers working around it and stuff like that. That remains to be seen, but that game is still to be played. Besides the ETH ecosystem, besides the Solana ecosystem, what is an other ecosystem on your radar? There's two. One, as a caveat, um, I, I sit on the foundation for SWE, which is an incredible project. That and Aptos are both move based. Uh, so we kind of rewrote the whole thing from scratch and have built other stuff around it. Those, I think, you're starting to see other people, Chris Beniski, Melton Demiris, talking about EVM, SVM, MVM. And I think that's probably right. Um, so those are on my radar screen. Obviously, I'm on the foundation, so I'm somewhat biased, but I, I see behind the, the, the curtain the amount of kind of activity and who they talk to and how it talks. The other one is the Cosmos ecosystem. So Celestia would be the obvious one there. There's a few others within that ecosystem. Um, and that is a that those are the two ecosystems that look like, okay, what is the next big layer one um, ecosystem? It's one of those two, I think, unless something else randomly comes out of nowhere. The entire game in this adoption curve of crypto, where the whole market cap is going from, let's say, $2.7 trillion today to maybe 10 or 12 trillion dollars the end of this cycle to maybe a hundred trillion by 2035 or something right your the entire game is to be in the game now when you use leverage if the market pulls back you lose your coins you're out of the game don't be out of the game also don't get distracted from the game the game is in the mass adoption of the big stuff the small stuff do that for fun another thing another way to lose money is doing stuff you shouldn't really be doing which is suddenly you see high yield somewhere and you're like, oh, I want to get that. Right. These markets go up 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, you know, 500 percent plus. You don't need to earn 10 percent yield or 15 percent yield. You don't because a yield comes with risk. The only risk free yield is staking yields when you stake it yourself. But you still have the price risk of, of Ethereum falling or Solana falling or whatever. But the smart contract risk is 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 almost zero. As soon as you start going out of that world, you're now going out the risk curve. It's like lending to the government versus lending to your friend. You should get higher yields from it because it's riskier because the chances are they won't pay you back. So that's another thing um, I think people need to be cautious of. And the other way people get caught out is leaving balances on stuff like MetaMask, thinking it's my wallet, it's fine. And before you know it, you've clicked on a stupid link, your wallet's been drained. For goodness sake, keep most of it on a ledger or a trezor or at worst in Coinbase or one of the big exchanges. 
don't just leave it in places that are vulnerable because your job is not to lose your tokens. That's the one rule of this is don't part with your tokens. So you just be really, really careful. Raul Pal explores what he refers to as the biggest game in town for this cycle, which centers on finding the cryptocurrency industry's Solana. When he looks back on the previous cycle, he observes that while efforts like Avalanche and Polygon had a big influence, Solana stood out as the real success story because of its captivating story and widespread adoption. Pal emphasizes that finding the next big project may bring about significant rewards, but he also cautions against taking on too much risk and stresses the need for prudence when evaluating a project's true adoption, story, and development activity. Pal proceeds to name two ecosystems that, in his opinion, require monitoring. The foundation, consisting of you and Aptos, has gained recognition for its inventive methodology and dynamic advancement. Celestia is one of the leading projects in the Cosmos ecosystem, which is the second. Pal highlights the need of concentrating on initiatives with real promise instead than getting distracted by speculative chances. These ecosystems might be contenders for the next large Layer 1 platform. Pal also provides investors with insightful guidance, stressing the need of remaining in the game without taking unwarranted risks and warning against over-leveraging. He suggests using safe wallets like Ledger or Trezor and cautions against pursuing large yields without taking the dangers into account. He also suggests avoiding putting sums on unstable platforms. Pal's advice is mostly focused on the idea of protecting one's tokens and using caution when interacting with the ever-changing cryptocurrency market. Until next time, happy investing.